Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Today, I have a game I have not played in, I want to say, close to about three years. I haven't uploaded any content and I haven't really played it. Today, we're going to be diving into an old roguelike that then turned ARPG called Hero Siege. So before we get started and I show you guys my class and show you guys my RF build, there's a few things I want to put down for people who are not aware of Hero Siege. If you were to go look at the game right now in Steam and you try to buy all the DLC, it's going to be close to like $200. All you need to play this game and have fun is if you look on screen here on the top, is just the base game. The base game runs for about 8 bucks, and that's all you need. The only thing you would want additionally to that is maybe if you want to play a, a non-base class, so maybe you could swipe for a non-base class, but $8 gets you the base game and you are pretty much good to go. Now, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump onto our character, so I can go ahead and show you guys. So over here, we've got a Pyromancer. Pyromancer is one of the base classes. If you decide to play Hero Siege, make sure you auto-equip your companion pet here. This is basically a loot pet. And we're just going to go ahead and jump right on into something so I can show you guys some stuff. Okay, so this is Hero Siege. Now, th there's kind of like two parts to this video. Part one is going to be explaining a little bit, and part two is going to be explaining the character. This ring you see in front of me is quite literally Righteous Fire. So... Do note that when you start playing Hero Siege, the reason the game has such negative reviews is because the game was originally and basically a roguelike, then got turned into an ARPG, then they scrapped it entirely and then made Hero Siege 2, which is currently what we're playing. It's all still the same game, but for people who paid for the game, you know, a while ago, it has underwent a lot of changes and a lot of people don't like that. So you'll see a lot of controversial stuff about it, but the way I look at it, it's a fun game for $8, but expect to have more bugs than Path of Exile. So, if you wanted to play Pyromancer and you wanted to follow along with the character I'm playing, we're going to go ahead and do a little deep dive and explain. First off, I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like. So, Hero Siege kind of has the gameplay of like Diablo 3 slash Path of Exile, but more, uh, how do I say this? It takes a lot of inspiration from Diablo 2. Example, you have rune words, you have rune words with like literally the same names. Um, you've got loot filters, but that has nothing to do really with D2. I guess that's more of a Diablo or a Path of Exile thing. Um, so if I were to, for example, hit like escape here and click this button, you can actually see rune words all here. These are like literal rune words. Uh, and my weapon, I have Divinity, which I think is comparable to Heart of the Oak in D2, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, <clears throat> so now that we got that pretty much out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about our character. So, this here, Scorching Aura, is basically our Righteous Fire. For leveling, I pretty much went straight into Scorching Aura, and then you want to use Blazing Trail for single target. Blazing Trail is a button you press, you get fire on your feet, and they actually stack. So when you're fighting bosses, you can stand on top of them and do this. I recommend for leveling, you put all your points into Vitality. It's very easy to respect this, but you kind of really want HP because this build kind of runs melee. I will state that this specific build is not very good for super endgame content, but it's a very good speed farmer. And with the way Hero Siege works, you can actually switch to your single target build really fast. So for example, if I click this, I am now in Hydra Spec. Uh, which would ideally be my single target for way late game. So at least they kind of got that right. What's nice is since you're not pigeoned into using full set gear, you're able to just make a swap like that because your sets are going to be more generic and global, right? One of the other cool things about Hero Siege is if you feel you're stuck in progression and you've got a little bit of money, you can always pay attention to this little codex button. And just go through and look at like items, for example. Maybe you're looking for like a weapon. You can click weapon and then you can just start looking for lower level stuff like this, for example, level 27. Not really good for our build, but you get the point. Then you can go to the auction house and you can search it. Now, <clears throat> there is one thing about Hero Siege, though, that I know a lot of people are not going to enjoy. So if I open up the town portal here and we port out, you do have to go through the campaign like three, four times, like older games. However, it is much quicker. If you look, it's pretty much like a straight line. Not really a straight line, but each one is like a zone. So each zone basically leads to the next one. And um, the thing about Hero Siege is that you see how like this has like some angry shit on it. Even when you're doing just like the campaign content, farming the open world or the zones, whatever you want to call them, is part of Hero Siege's gameplay in general. As you're farming zones, random things will occur. So I feel that compared to a lot of other games, the campaign is kind of somewhat structured correctly because of how much farming is done 
in the campaign itself or in later zones. So with that being said, I'm going to show a little bit more gameplay. So I'm going to go back to King's Garden here and I'm just going to kind of zoom through. Um, if I had to say where I am right now, I'd say I'm kind of like in white maps on this character. I could do some harder content, but just for the sake of the video, I want to do something like a little bit easier. So I'd say this is kind of closer to like white maps, maybe like uh, mid white maps. Just go through. Wee. I'll go through here and then I will go flash my gear for you guys so you have an idea of how you want to maybe itemize your character. Also, during leveling with most characters, um, there are there's basically a stat that's like flat fire damage to spells. It's very different. It's kind of like Path of Exile. You know how Path of Exile, you look at a weapon and it says like adds fire damage. You specifically need like fire damage to spells. Uh, and this is going to be your prime stat for leveling. You can pretty much find this on charms. Uh, when you're in like pretty much at level 100, you don't really need to aim for them anymore. But it is uh, is a very, very good stat. If I have any on me specifically, if not all good. What is that? Actually not bad. I see here. Oh here, fire skill damage. So it would look like this. This is like your prime stat for leveling because it literally adds that much damage. Unfortunately, it has no scaling late game, but it doesn't matter because it gets you through the early game. If we go back to our skills, you'll notice that when I flash the skills, if you play Diablo 2, you'll see something that stands out immediately. Uh, it's very easy to understand how you're going to build your character. There's not that much customization from player to player unless you're playing different builds. Uh, Scorching Aura has synergy with Fire Shield, Phoenix Flight, and Blazing Trail. Just like Diablo 2, you dump points into those for your synergy bonus. Just so happens that our flame shield, our fire shield, actually gives us physical damage reduction, which is pretty nice. Okay. Now we lead on to the next part about this game that will frustrate a lot of people. as a perfect, perfect timing. This game, unfortunately, is littered with more on death effects than Diablo 4, Diablo 3, and Path of Exile put together as if they had a baby and then their baby had children. Then you will get Hero Siege. I would say... 95% of the time, the only thing you're going to die to are mobs that you have already killed or affixes like lightning enchanted that pops out of monsters. So this is the way I like to explain Hero Siege. For $8, it is very fun and there's a lot of content. But unfortunately, the game is also so frustrating to play. <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of bugs, a lot of misinformation, maybe not misinformation per se, but more so like hard to understand things. Like if I if I look at my character and I hover over Scorching Aura, it says Fire Break. It says Fire Break 60%. If I hold Alt or Control, th there's no description of what that does. You know, I haven't played in three years and I don't think that's even been updated. I've heard people tell me that it breaks enemy resistance, but then I've also had people tell me that it's just a multiplier to your damage. Like it's a separate multiplier. So, you know, there's always a whole, whole bunch of different things. Uh, but again, what, what I go back to for Hero Siege is that it's a game you can kind of keep grinding and there's so much content that's layered into the game. So if you really want to like no life it for like a week, there is enough content for you to no life it. So it's kind of unique like that. It's not a game I play very often, but when I do play it, I do enjoy my experience no matter how frustrating it is. This would be like the Act 1 boss. He'll probably go down pretty fast here. All the bosses have some form of mechanics. It's nice. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. It has changed a bunch from the old game it used to be. For example, a lot of people remember Hero Siege with the old relic system. Um, you don't lose relics on death anymore, and now they just stack to 10. So I have like really bad relics. I think what you would want is like Magic Mushroom, Triforce, I think Holy Bible, and I forgot what the other one is. There's also some really troll stuff in the game. Uh, for example, I'll press a button that might give you an example of how trolly the game can be. Uh, no, you didn't blue screen. It's a literal item in the game. It stuns everything on the screen, including your own PC. So anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll probably be playing Hero Siege for probably the rest of the week, and then we'll move on to something else, maybe Elden Ring. So anyway, I'm out. Take care. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. That's pretty much about it. So see you guys all tomorrow.